All right, so I'm back out at Pescadero, and today I'm gonna to try to paint on a larger panel. Uh, last time I was out here, I did a 12 by 16, and it just felt too restrictive or too small. Uh, a lot of the little shapes that I was working with, like little rocks and whatever, it just, I don't know, it, I just felt like I would have benefited from having a larger panel. Today I'm gonna to be painting on this 16 by 24 inch panel, and I'm here with Melina. <laughs> and I don't really have any composition in mind, but, um, as you guys know, I usually make things up so it shouldn't be a problem. All right, so I think I'm gonna paint in this direction here. I have painted this view before, but in a panorama style. So it'll be fun to experiment with a bigger panel. Lots of atmospheric perspective to work with. As you can see, like the distant, uh, you know, the land in the distance is really lighter, a lot lighter in value. So I'm gonna set up right here, and one important thing is the ability to walk back. Sometimes when I'm painting out in like, you know, uh, areas like this where there's a lot of shrubs, uh, you know, I, I won't be able to walk back, and that's not good. So here, I can walk back on this trail quite a ways, and then look at my painting from like, say, 15 or 20 feet, which is gonna be important when I'm painting on a large panel. It looks like Melina's set up. Let's go see what she's gonna work on today. All right, so you know what you're going to paint? Um, probably these rocks. I like how they kind of go in like that. Like in a... Oh, yeah, that looks nice. Like how the rocks go off into the distance? Yeah. All right, and Melina's working on a 12 by 16 today. All right, so I know I've talked about this before, but when I go out plein air painting, I'm not looking for a perfect composition through my viewfinder. What I'm looking for is a compositional idea to build a painting around, um, and then I move things around to create an interesting painting, or what I hope to be an interesting painting. So that's what I'm trying to come up with, is a compositional idea uh, inspired by the scenery. So if I need to pull you know, waves from one area or rocks from one area, if there's elements that I like in one area, I can bring them into my composition. So that's what I'm trying to come up with right now, is an idea that is inspiring. Inspiring enough to get me to be excited to paint. All right, as usual, I'm sketching with burnt sienna and I just thin this with a little bit of odorless mineral spirits. And um, the nice thing is that this will uh, complement the blue greens in the water.
All right, so here's the compositional idea. At first, um, you know, I'm working with this bit of land here. At first, I put it lower, and it was kind of in the center of the panel, uh, and I didn't like that, so I kind of bumped it up a little bit. And I want to work with the atmospheric perspective here, so I figure I'm going to push the distant lands closer to the top of the panel. The sky is just basically gray. There's not a lot of interesting things going on, so I'm not going to include a lot of the sky. Um, and maybe try to include more of this foreground here where there's this like bluish kind of, uh, you know, gravelly stones or whatever. Kind of incorporate that in the foreground here as well. I'll probably bring some of the color that I'm seeing over here, I'll probably bring that over into the composition as well. So I get that nice play of blue greens against the rust color or orange in the cliff. All right, so I'm gonna start with my darks and I'm using ultramarine blue and uh, alizarin crimson. And I'm gonna to try to lean this mixture more towards red. And as you can see that, I'll make it transparent so you can kind of see it. That's kind of the color I'm looking for. I want it to be dark, but I want it to also be transparent. And I'll use liquid as well to thin and maybe a touch of uh, odorless mineral spirits to kind of get it really, um, you know, loose and easy to work with. And then I can start, uh, you know, mapping out the darks. But see how there's like that transparency going on? That's what I want. I, want to, I don't want to have opaque darks. Okay, so there is what I'm working with. And I do like the arrangement of rocks. There's some opportunity to incorporate some color in the water in the foreground here. Um, and then also the other thing, this, this bit of cliff, which is over here, I think that I'm gonna kind of move that in a little bit maybe. I'm not sure, just compositionally. I don't know, maybe it works. 
uh, but I'm gonna think about that. Or maybe it's just sort of thin, so maybe a little bit more of it, but not too much. And, uh, but that's the basic idea. Now I can um, decide where to put waves in here, uh, you know, as needed. All right, so I know you guys like to see uh, my palette as I'm working. Uh, today I'm being really, really spontaneous. Um, so I'll explain what I did here. Um, you know, obviously I talked about laying in the darks and then the other colors, I'm just, uh, I'm not trying to match colors that I'm seeing because I'm not seeing really any colors out there. Um, so I'm just using ultramarine and white to create these distant mountains and then I'm adding a little bit of phthalo blue for the water. A lot of this will get painted over but at least it, you know, it's, there, there's some color going on. And uh, I'm mostly interested right now in just getting a composition that feels solid to me and that I'm excited about. And then I can come in and play around with color. Oh, in the these rocks in the distance? This one right here? Yeah, I mean, I was kind of experimenting and having fun with that. Yeah, I think okay. so, because then you'll create more atmospheric perspective. Okay. Like, what I love is how you've got all these really beautiful, like, um, the underpainting, the burnt sienna underpainting playing nicely against those aquas. Beautiful. And then, yeah, if you tone that down as you go off into the yeah, distance. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. Maybe I should lighten this a little bit more, so it's darker and then goes lighter as it recedes. Yeah, you could experiment with that. Okay. And it's like the dark values, you know, like in here, those will come forward. Mm -hmm. So if you gently calm those down and then gently calm this down, okay. then it's gonna make it, yeah, you'll get that atmospheric ex uh, effect. Okay. okay, so it is actually starting to get really misty out here, almost like a rain. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, I, I'm gonna leave everything kind of how it is. It's just, I'm gonna put in the white water pattern now. So I'm gonna mix up some titanium white with a touch of ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna put that, uh, just kind of work that into this area here, creating some definition.
All right, so I'm gonna stop here. I don't wanna overwork it, and it's getting really misty out here. Uh, so I will do an analysis of this painting on my Patreon channel, link in description. So you did a 12 by 16 today, which is larger than usual. Mm -hmm. So did you notice any benefits from that? Mm, I would have felt a lot looser. Uh -huh. um, I felt comfortable um, without having to get too detailed and just slapping paint on. I felt uh like that gave me a lot of freedom. Um, and did it, do you feel like it took you longer actually to do that painting than say a 9 by 12? No, it, it was like the opposite. It was yeah. like, it was, it was easier to just brush paint around without having to get too tight. So I wasn't fussing over that. And yeah, I kind of just, I like the looseness of it. All right, so we had a great time out here as usual. Uh, Melina was filming today too, so I'm gonna put a link to her YouTube channel down below. So be sure to check out her channel. And other than that, uh, stay creative guys. See you in the next video.